Hello everyone. Today we are talking with uh, Frank Stefan. He is a founder of a couple interesting start startups and he also has um, experience as a trainer speaker. So uh, today we are going to uh, to know a couple of his secrets how to reach some success with your startups, especially FitTech startups. So hello Frank. Yeah, hello. Thanks a lot for having uh, me. Will you, will, you, will you share with us uh, some of your history? How, how have you came uh, to the point where you are currently? Yeah, yeah, sure. Happy to do that. I'm, I'm not sure, however, if there are so many secrets, though, because if there were, we, I would also like to know them. <laughs> I think it's more of a, a personal story and, and kind of that's, that's probably very individual, like, like as always. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so where would I start? So um, the product that, that we're currently running, Lendry, maybe a bit of history uh, to that. Um, so my my co-founder and myself, um, we met each other actually in a in a different profession. Um, it was in strategy consulting, where we were working until um, late 2015, um, and it was more or less the let's say the early days of digitization and data analytics, and we were always interested in that. And um, uh, more or less a side project back then. We thought, why not apply um, this, these techniques and um, also some early AI techniques to, to financial data. And one of the main reasons was because financial data was widely available and also, at least in some cases, uh, we didn't have to pay a lot of money for that. So we, we started that on the side and then we relatively quickly we developed uh, a couple of trading algorithms um, just, just for ourselves in the beginning. So let's say a small prop trading uh, company that, that grew out of that. Um, and after we have then quit our jobs in order to focus fully on that, we asked ourselves what to do with it. And the first, let's say, classical um, idea that came to my mind was why not commercialize that in a classical way? So um, setting up a fund. So we went through all the regulatory uh, hassle. We got a, a Bafin license in order to, to run a, an alternative investment fund. We did that in the beginning with a focus on equities and ETFs and um, based on algorithmic strategies. Um, and on the side, again, so, 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 let's say a new side project from our side project, um, we also started trading crypto. And particularly in 2016, beginning 2017, when the market, when the volume was growing, we realized, okay, there, there might be some strategies that are actually somewhat scalable at least. I'm still skeptical that the market is super scalable yet, but, but um, at least it worked for us um, somehow. And um, while doing that, we experienced um, certain, let's say, financial innovations that happened that happened in the crypto market, which actually became um, what Landry is now. And um, to go a bit in the, into that, um, maybe, is it is it fine if I directly switch then to, to explaining what what Landry is and, and how it came out of that? Okay, of course, so sir. Um, the the interesting feature that we found is that in order to trade on in a margin account and to trade on leverage. Um, in many crypto accounts, you, uh, you have a peer-to-peer -peer system that finances these margin accounts. So leverage trading and, and also short selling is nothing new. And you have it in the classical markets as well. However, in, in most of the traditional markets, you mostly have a middleman. So either a broker or a bank who's providing the capital that you use for leverage trading and where you pay interest rates to this middleman. And usually the interest rates are actually pretty, pretty, pretty low and, and almost no one realizes the whole economics behind it. But for, but for broker and banks, it's, it's an interesting business. I mean, in a crypto space, it's a bit different. And historically, uh, since they didn't have a lot of capital in the beginning, were just some tech startups who built these crypto exchanges and, and wanted to allow leverage trading. They thought, why not make a peer to peer market so that users could lend themselves money in order to trade on left or not trade, trade leverage. Um, and what we found out is that these, these rates that we were using ourselves were actually quite high and we were thinking, why not systematically go on the other side of the trade? So why not being the capital provider instead of the trader who has to pay the rates? Um, and so we looked at it a bit more closely. We looked at what exchanges do that and how does it work? And we really quickly found that this is, it is an interesting opportunity. However, you, knew, you need to do it systematically. So you would need a software that automates and optimizes this lending process on a crypto exchange. And so we built this software first for ourselves. Again, like everything that we did, we first built it for ourselves and then, <laughs> then we commercialized it for others. Um, and in the meantime, all of our investors in the traditional fund, of course, they knew what we were doing and we were showing them also what, 
we were discovering on the side and they said, wait a second, if that's, if that's actually working, then this is a better product than what you've offered us in the fund. So we completely cannibalized our fund and, and, and then we started Lendery.net. Um, and and why, is, why is it in, why is it in, so why, why did we follow the path? Because we realized in the end for the user, it's an alternative fixed income product, so to say. It's an, it's an alternative stream of passive income that he or she can generate. And, and it has two interesting features, basically. The first is the return side of it. Um, users, uh, so traders who are on the exchanges, who are on the, on the other side of the trade, um, they are generally willing to pay relatively high rates. Why? Because crypto trading is still highly speculative. So if a trader thinks, I don't know, Bitcoin will go up 3% a day, then he or she wouldn't mind paying five basis points on for that day for the, the dollars that, that he lent to, to do the trade. Um, and the second reason is uh, the, the risk side is also pretty interesting because different from classical peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms, um, a user who gets the capital cannot run away with it. So the, the user cannot pull it from the platform and cannot buy a car or not pay it back. So um, the, um, it, instead, it can, he or she can only trade on the platform. And since the market is open 24 seven, the platform can, can fully control um, the capital in use. So what could happen is that a position runs against the trader. And, and, but since the um, capital is always um, fully su su surveilled by the, by the platform, um, there's an automatic liquidation mechanism that would jump in and would liquidate a position that is negative um, in order to make sure that the capital plus interest rate is paid back. So it's, an, so it's from both sides, it's from risk and return perspective, um, it's an interesting situation, and, and that's why we thought, why not, why not make an investable product out of it? Um, and and that's, that's how we built Blender. Yeah. And what is your current business model? I mean, how, how do you make money? It's exactly, exactly. That's a good question. How do we make money? And so currently, we are operate, operating in what you would call a managed account solution. So um, currently, our users have their own account on a, on a crypto exchange, and this is fully their own private account, they have their passwords, we don't have any access to that. Um, however, um, once they set up their account, once they put um, US dollar on the platform, so we only operate in US dollar, um, then they can create an API key for this account um, that allows us to, to access only this so-called margin funding. So the API key doesn't allow any trading or any withdrawals or deposits or anything, just the just margin funding functionality. Um, and with this API key, they then go to our platform, plug that in, have their personal profile there, um, and we charge. We just charge a, um, a, a usage fee, a software usage fee. So it's basically a software as a service model, and that is based on the performance that the user makes with the software. So we are, in that case, we are a pure yeah, software provider in, 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 in that equation. At least that's right now. So we have some we have some further developments in the pipeline, um, but 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 that's the current that's the current working of Blender. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that you your project has cannibalized uh, your fund, uh, yeah. but uh, how does it happen? Do you still, I mean, operate like a Blender, or it it is is it just? Uh, uh, on the P to P to P on the um, platform, and you as a your fund as a user operates there. Yeah, and so so the fund is not involved at all in in this equation. So the fund is current, currently empty. We're not using it. We have some ideas how we might use it again, but it's not it's it's not it's not our core business anymore. So Lendry, so this the software is is the is the main is the main business. Um, and in this, in this equation, we don't act as a financial institution in any way. So we, we never have the user's money. And so we are not, we are not actively engaging in that as a lender. We're just providing software to people who want to lend their capital to, to crypto traders, traders on these exchanges and want to automate that. They wouldn't also need to use us. You can do that, you can do that manually. So you could, in principle, you could sit uh, in front of the computer screen 24 seven and every time capital is coming back from, from the trader, you could say, okay, I want to relend it again. We're doing some optimization, so it might also make sense from that perspective to use the software. But the main value add is the automation 24-7, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and maybe there's one, one, one important aspect as well. Um, so we, we are not, so we, we started with, with, with the traditional um, world and we are still somehow, um, we're still somehow 
at home in the traditional world. So what this product is, is trying to do is building a bridge between traditional investors and new financial innovations, innovations that take place there. And so it's super important that we and our customer group are actually traditional investors. So it's a, it, these are investors who might have equity or uh, maybe bond products, maybe also real estate or so in their portfolio, and they want to add an uncorrelated stream of fixed income. Um, and that's why it's super important that we focus on US dollars. So we're not doing crypto lending. There are some bots out there and, and so we're doing that. It's a clear differentiation here because we want to, uh, we want to solely focus on US dollar lending so that you have no crypto exposure at all. Because our clients, are, yeah, their, their main interest is not being a crypto investor, but their main interest is getting, getting an alternative, um, alternative income stream in, in their more or less traditional portfolios. So it's more bridge, bridge building product, if, if you want, between the classical world and the, and the, and the crypto space. That That's basically was my question, because uh, uh, previously we uh, spoke with, uh, with, we have talked with uh, um, FinTech startup from Russia. They create a lending platform where you can give them your cryptocurrency and uh, they give you real money. They send you in different ways. So um, that the question was, how have you implemented that feature? I mean, if everyone mm, lends to everybody um, on the cryptocurrency, how have you connected uh, real money? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Exactly, and, and it's, it's actually it's a big differentiation. Yes, I know. I know that there is a, a whole industry emerging, which is also super interesting where people can use their crypto assets as collateral for getting loans in fiat, right? So if they want to, I don't know, if they want to finance a car and they are long-term Bitcoin holders, then they can use their Bitcoin as a collateral and get actually euro, dollars, whatever, pounds, um, in, order to, in order to buy their car. And for, our product is, is different. And so we start, we start with fiat and we stay in fiat. And so we, so we need to use crypto exchanges who, um, who allow fiat, um, which they are, um, and who have, this this peer to peer um, uh, funding mechanism, and it, and but it's but it's a good question because um, it means that we only finance leverage trading. So if you lend crypto, then you finance short selling on the other side, right? Because of, because the, the trader on the other side needs to lend um, a crypto asset in order to short in order to short it and then and then give it back later. And in our case, the crypto trader only gets dollars, and he would use that for for trading on leverage. Um, so, so our investors never touch crypto actually. So they make a direct US dollar deposit to the crypto exchange and they create their API keys, put it in their personal profile, and then the software takes over the, the US dollar lending on the, on the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is actually, I would, I'm, I'm not even sure of it, but I would call it a crypto product. Actually, I think it's not a crypto product. I think it's a passive income product. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so the cryptocurrency is only needed for are making the operations uh, more secured as as inst instead of uh, fiat. Mm -hmm. so, so as I said, in our in our in, in all the transactions that have to do with us do not involve any crypto. Uh, do not involve any crypto. It's purely dollar based. And um, the trader, however, on the exchange who uses the dollar is using it for trading crypto because it's on a crypto exchange, right? The trader can trade Bitcoin, Ether, whatever. Um, and he, and he, he trades um, US dollar crypto pairs. Um, and in, in order to do that in a leveraged way, um, he uses the dollar um, uh, from our users, but also from many other users. It's actually, it's actually pretty big, mar big market. So for example, on, on Bitfinex um, alone, it's roughly half a billion um, dollars lending volume per day that, that, that's going through. So, it's 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 quite sizable already, and that was also interesting for us because we we saw that um, maybe also different to many of the, the short term or technical trading strategies that you have in crypto, which might work fine until a, a certain volume of assets is reached um, or of turnover is reached, and this is actually quite scalable. So if, I would say different than, for example, short term um, exchange arbitrage strategies or or something like that, which where you where you might have Maybe you might run into into scalability problems at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel uh, how last changes of the situation on the planet, how how they um, 
changed your business? Is it, is it grown or, or no? Yeah, that's an answer. Yeah, we, we actually, we ask ourselves that because um, uh, so, so my, my hope is actually that, that mid to long term, it, it will help us because we can show that, that we have an investment product that didn't die in the, in the, in the market crash. And they didn't lose money for, for our investors. And we know from many investors who told us that hey, it's great that I had you in, in my portfolio and that, what, that was actually the, the test that it, that it is truly uncorrelated. Um, and of course, we, of course, now we have this track record and we can, we can put that out. Um, on, the, on the other hand, yes, there have been larger uh, investors that we've been talking to before who, of course, postponed um, investment decisions now and said, okay, we have, it, it was such a bloodbath in, in my, in, in the rest of my portfolio or in my existing portfolio. I wouldn't want to start anything new before the, the last quarter of the year or something like that. So we, so we, so we had, I think we had both. Um, but I would say the investors that have already been on board, they they were, they were happy, but yes, we see that the, the whole investment world right now is, is in many ways, people are, people are either very unsure because because they, they have been hurt a lot and um, or um, they, they try to be opportunistic with existing markets because because it, it seems that so much is possible right now and everyone has their own strategies and um, yeah it, and, um, and, and, and I think it's also hard right now if you are a professional market participant if you're a professional investor right now and um, I mean what happened to the markets in the in the last weeks also despite the the, the probably clear opinion of every economist that we will end up in a recession probably worldwide um, and markets have been going up like this, it's, it's, it's super hard to analyze. And I can imagine that people have so much to do with their classical portfolios right now that some of them might not think about new, about new products. Um, yeah, but long term, I, I, hope it will, I hope it will help us. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about your future goals of, of the project? I mean, do you plan to sell it to some strategic partner or maybe some bank or uh, and the, the other question is do you feel that banks uh, somehow may, may step on the on the on that area and to create something like your project to to compete with with your and and mm -hmm. similar startups mm -hmm. Um, okay, these are two questions. So I answered them one after the other. So the first question was, what, is, what are our, our immediate or long-term goals? Um, so I think currently the goal is to, to follow, so really serving the customers that we already have and, and, and growing the customer base. And, and what leads out of that is that we are trying to make the access to the product as easy as possible. And, and one project that we're currently working on is putting the whole product into a security that can be bought on a stock exchange or, uh, or over the counter. So that's one thing. Why? And because our, because our investors, our current users, um, are, come, they come from the traditional world. And for some of them, it's a hassle of creating their own crypto account. So they would want to invest. But if you can give them a security like with a, with a, with a number that they can, um, within their, within their um, online banking, they can buy, then it's much easier. So that's, that's, that's one of the things. The second thing is that for larger international investors, we try to do the same, but with a, with a proper fund. So with an international um, like a hedge fund-like approach that, that where we would offer that product actually combined with another alternative fixed income product. But I, it would take, maybe take a bit too long to go, to go into that now. Um, and in terms of in terms of exiting the company, I think it's 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 way too early to talk about that. Of course, strategic partnerships are, are interesting. So finding partners for distribution, particularly in the traditional space, um, might be might be interesting, definitely. And we are we are also in talks with some uh, private banks um, or, or some advising firms, and that, that's interesting. Um, but we are not we are currently not thinking about about. So, yeah, yeah. S selling anything and it's also yeah it's also way too early i mean we started this thing last year and we're having organic growth since then and we um, and, and there's so much to do so much to build and we want to we want to focus on that second question was if banks um would step into the field as well or build something similar um could be i think i think in terms of the so if i think about the let's say innovation or in particular, digitization priorities that banks have. I think there's so much they have to do and they will probably do before entering new products like this um, that, I, that I don't think there, there's at least not a large traditional bank will make the jump from 
currently having their branch business or their, their current banking system and then adding a product a product like that so it would be so I, I would be highly surprised because i think the, the 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 classical digitization waves that you had in 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 other industries like you know commerce and um, hospitality travel and um, communication and so on um, has just started in, in in financial services so i think there's so much to do that has just to do with accessibility, usability, user journeys, and so on, where currently there, there are other fintechs like pay, payment providers or mobile banks and so on who are, who are actually posing to be real competitors to the, to the existing banking landscape that I think we are um, somewhere currently seen as being in a niche and, and providing an alternative investment product, which is anyway not the main focus of most of the large banks. There might be private banks who are interested, but then, but, but yeah, and then my hope is there might, might be maybe an interesting partnership opportunity or something. Um, but, I, but I would be surprised if a, if a, if a, if a, if a classical bank would. Mm -hmm. So the, the only way is, is uh, some, if, 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 uh, if banks, for example, will want to create something like that, it, it would be easier for them to work with you as a, SaaS provider for them with white label or something like that. So, yeah, it could, if, if, they, if they would want to go down the road, that, that could be. That, I that see. Could be. Sure. Uh, uh, but by the way, what is your current market where you test this software where you have or, organic growth? Yeah, like the current, currently it's, it, we are mostly focused on, on Germany. So may, I would say 90% or so of our users are, are currently in Germany. It just had to do with has to do with the fact that, that the team is, is based in Germany, our network was here. It just started like many ideas started as a, more or less as a family and friends product. So we knew that we knew in advance, okay, people were interested, build, please build me a product, we build it. And then we thought about yeah, putting a brand on it and, and commercializing it. But right now it's, it's, it's super, it's still super organic. So um, we, we don't make any large marketing campaign so far and um, we also almost not reach reach out into other countries and um, which but which we want to do and um, however we, we we are very clear about first getting the product right and, and we have we have spent some time so the product is is really working now we're getting good feedback now and and, and now thinking about how can we how can we extend that to other to other parties also being very clear that our core competency is building the product and explaining the product and to, to people who are not familiar with the space. I think that's, it's not only the software that's, work, that's running, but it's also a storytelling and an explanation and, uh, and advantage that you want to have um, uh, against, against competitors or against other products. And so we, so we, we spend a lot of time, spend a lot of time there so far. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I understood correctly, your model uh, that, that means that somebody lent US dollars to someone and the person, if uh, he wants to, to use it to trade on crypto market, uh, convert it somehow using APIs uh, to crypto and work with, with that. Uh, what, 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 is, uh, what is the, your unfair, what is unfair advantages? Uh, I mean, if this is a marketplace, then uh, how, how would you, how will you secure your product? I mean, if someone will try to create something like that, uh, is, is it a lot of efforts to create something like that or what, 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 what do you do? Yeah. Um, no, from, from the tech side, you could, you could, of course, you could build, you could build a, an, an algorithm or a software who, who does the same. So if you're, if you're a tech savvy investor, you could build a software that automates margin funding for sure. I think um, the, the main, the main focus on what we, where we put most work in is making, making the explanation of the product, so what it does, how it works, what are the risks, how would it fit in a portfolio. And um, with, with the clear focus in mind, with a clear target audience being the traditional investor, um, uh, and then making the accessibility as, as, as easy as possible for someone who has nothing to do with crypto. I think if you're a crypto enthusiast yourself, you anyway, you anyway have an account and you're good in programming, you could, you could, you could build a rudimentary version of that, of that yourself, definitely. Um, but for us, it's more the, the investor who has yeah, a couple of investments already and wants to add something to the portfolio then, then use us. So I think, it's, I think this, this um, accessibility point is, storytelling and explanation point and, and making sure someone who's completely new understands what's going on. I think that's the, 
that's as much part of the product as the, as the software itself, um, particularly because it is a new space. So if you, if, you would, if you would have built a product in, I don't know, mobile payments or so, then we probably wouldn't need to tell so much about what a payment is because anyone is doing it anyways. Um, but in that case, margin funding, this is something many, many people have never, never heard of. And, and so, so, it's, so it's something that needs to be explained. Uh, yeah, for example, for me, this is something new too. So uh, it, as you can see, I, I, I'm even barely understand how does, how, how all that work, but, 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 but I, I have spent 15 years in IT and, and uh, last three years in FinTech. So, but still <laughs> I have questions. If you ever thought about leverage trading, then you, then you have used it. Or if you ever did it, you, then, then you have used it. And then there was, then there was a middleman. There was probably a broker or I don't know where you, where you do your equities trading or, or whatever. And there was a broker who was charging you interest rates for that. So you were borrowing, you were short term borrowing, I don't know, dollars or, or, or whatever and from, from, from the middleman and paying interest rates. And in that case, this has just been converted to a peer to peer market. And um, so that yeah, our users kind of can be can take part of a brokerage or bank business. That's the interesting. That's the interesting aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you actually have a competitors current, currently, or is it com completely new uh, methodology? Yeah, I, I would say I would I would give two answers to that. There there are, so there, are, there are a couple of bots out there who mainly focus on crypto enthusiasts, so on people who anyway have crypto assets on, on, on exchanges, and then there are bots of lending these crypto exchanges. This is, this is something that exists. Um, uh, so you could call in competitors, although I would rather say, the second answer would be, I would say the, the savings, savings accounts and in the end, um, central banks are more of a competitor because if they would start to offer interesting, interesting uh, rates again, um, then that, this might be a competition. So we are currently running on a, on a yearly interest rate that, that is between 10 and 15 percent, um, or at least it has been like that in, in, the, in the last couple of years, with a with a daily liquidity, and so I would say that the, the from from the from the type of product, it's it's more or less it's very similar to a savings account that actually offers interest rates. So should should this um, come about again in the classical banking world, with, which I think is very very far away, um, then this would be a competition. And so so so, so my answer would be um, that. The main competitor is the central bank, and the central bank is, is currently not doing a good job in providing interest rates, and 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 that and that's that's why hopefully we can thrive with that product. Yeah, I guess I guess <laughs> last ten years, maybe more, the situation was closer to current point, and I, I don't think that it will change in future and in, in the short or middle term at least. So I believe in. Great perspective of your project. Um, uh, so it's super interested, interesting that uh, you have organic growth. Uh, is it somehow uh, connected with your um, P PR activities, or how? How? Have, what? What? What do you do to reach people to make them? Uh, recommend this service to service to, to each other. Yeah, yeah, th yeah good question. Um, so as, as I said, m m mostly it's really, um, so if I would say where does most of the assets come from, it's, it's personal recommendations from users. So it's an organic recommendation system. We, we spend quite some time on making the usability as possible uh, as, as we can, so that we have a nice um, a mobile dashboard and so on, that, so users can like with a, with a um, minute on a minute by minute basis access their portfolios and this is something that for example is shown around so people people talk to others and say okay look, look at that so I have, a, I have a new investment product do you know that and so this is this is actually an important source of user growth is personal recommendations of other users for this we also established an affiliate program and um, which is quite uh, quite uh, quite well used so far and um, so that users get discounts if they recommend other users it's also working um, apart from that, yes, I've done some some interviews, a bit of media, a bit of PR, um, some events actually that that, that, that we participated in. Um, but uh, but yeah, as I said, we haven't started a proper um, like paid advertising campaign and, and, and stuff like that. And I'm not even sure if that's if that's the right move. I would rather go for partnerships, particularly in other countries where there are already customer bases, or where particularly these 
segments that we target, so high net worth individuals, um, maybe even family offices or um, fund of funds and, and so on, who, who are looking for um, looking for alternative investment products and where they sit and where there is already a contact established. Why? Because in, in this whole investment space, um, customer acquisition costs via Google AdWords or any of the other techniques are usually so high um, that it that it's that it's really really hard to, to play this game and it might not it might not make might not be the smartest smartest tool. So we're not actually not playing of, of I don't know running large scale uh, internet advertising campaigns. I'm not I'm not sure that that's the right that that's the right approach. Mm -hmm. well, I see. Um, a couple of uh, questions. Uh, I have also is one of them is uh, what do you think about the remote cooperation? Uh, what, what do you feel about the ex this experience of these days? Or maybe have you worked before with uh, remote teams? Uh, where, where where is your developers currently? Where 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 are they? Where what what do you plan to do after after all this? Uh, stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would, say, so I would distinguish that also again two answers. I would say the, the remote working in terms of um, being physically not at, in the same place, um, it works quite well. This is not this is not so important, particularly because you yeah you have all these tools and software development right, and, and you can you can like um, and without a problem work from from different locations. And um, I would say what where it's more more uh, important is. Um, is someone a freelancer or is, uh, and it's only partially working on a project or is someone part of the team? And here would would say my, my experience is clear that everything that is really crucial to the product, but also to the storytelling, to the touch and feel and everything, it's, it's so my experience so far is it's much better um, if, if the person is fully part of the team. Why? Because um, to, in order to make independent decision, which is needed to being really effective, um, you have to have a vision and a feeling of the overall Goal that the company wants to achieve and that the product wants to achieve, and that's that. And you can increase the chances of, of that being the case for every individual participant if he or she is part of the team. And um, so, uh, this in the, so in order to increase independence and in working, um, you need to be as closely aligned as possible in terms of the vision. And this usually works better when when you actually work with people that are in your team um, instead of uh, freelancers. Sometimes we did it as well, particularly yeah, in, 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 in the past. Of course, if there are peaks um, or certain things that are very commoditized, so then you can outsource stuff. But um, yeah, but we would prefer um, working with our team. And actually, th this product or Landry um, has been has been has been fully built in house. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. I I agree with that. That it's easier to work with uh, people who know. All the OKRs and all, all that, and, and on, on, only some something not so important, something not so core, centralized could be outsourced to freelance uh, market, for example. Um, it's and hard, it's hard finding freelancers. Right? It's hard finding team members, but it's also super hard finding good freelancers. So it's also another aspect. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's it's a process. Of course, it's 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 it, it doesn't work like that. Uh, one last question I have uh, in the end of our uh, exciting uh, dialogue. Uh, I um, could you share some? I'm always asking about this. I'll always ask. Uh, could you share some uh, one or two maybe your mistakes of in in your career where we we could learn. From 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 them, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe I would I would pick one, which is which actually fits to this very story that we that we talked about today, and that is um, if you if you approach something and you have and you have a vision, um, don't don't be too abstract with the problem that you're trying to solve. Rather, be as specific as possible. So rather have have a ideally have a user or a customer before you start to work. Um, and and I would apply that on our own history with the with the fund that I, that I told you about. And when we were starting an algorithmic fund or quant fund, and then in general that is a business model that can work. The thing is, if you just say this is a quant fund, then it's just another quant fund, and that's super dangerous because this is a, this is a large industry and it's 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 heavy competition out there. 
and you have if, if you have no differentiation whatsoever of course you can always find them and can always work on storytelling but in the end if it is not that different from all the funds that are out there and having having a long track record then you might have a very hard time and, and actually it's something that you experience as well and on the other hand landry is, is, a, is a good example where we started with a very very clear product and it was a it was a, a, a precise thing that we wanted to solve first for ourselves and then we knew others that we talked to and said okay once you have that please let me use it as well and that was the point where we said okay this is this is precise and concrete enough we are we're going to go down that route not knowing how, how big it will be but that's also not important i think in the beginning in the beginning it's just important to solving a problem and um, and then of course while you're doing that you have to think okay can i how can i onboard more users is that is that interesting what do i have to change in a product to open it up and, and stuff like that but i would say make make sure you're actually solving a very specific problem that is not solved in 20 ways already <laughs> Uh, well, I, I guess not everyone uh, so ha, ha, have so much of luck. I guess maybe maybe luck plus experience uh, to find such a problem. So uh, that's why we we see a lot of competition everywhere. So people are just cop copy copying other uh, ideas. So yeah, this is. Um, yeah. Uh, or, or, quite or, good quite quite a good advice but, but it's also a mindset thing right if, if you if you look if you look if you're looking around or if you're being alert to problems that you have every day or that or that you hear from others i think it's also interesting also to hear if people are complaining about something and um, actually one of the few good things that some people do complain all the time because you get to know about unsolved problems so one should i think you should always have a list with them and note down problems that they hear from other people um, might be in a totally different in industry. Ideally, it is in a very specific industry that, that um, you and I have no idea about, and that, that might be an interesting problem um, because it might be very specific and you know at least already one who is having it and is complaining about it, so, it, so you might find a solution for that. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit idealistic, but... <laughs> Well, well, it's it's very optimistic. It's uh, I mean, uh, if you don't if the, if if you don't see the opportunity to 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 solve some problem, then just go make some researches, talk to people, cause death and stuff like that, and maybe maybe you will find some something precision, something precise to to solve. Um, this, this is very good advice in, in in the end of our conversation. Um, well, uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you for talking with yeah. us.